All right, so here we're just going to kind of go through some guys who maybe we're panicking about or, or hey, have some patience. So we're just going to kind of go through a list of guys here. Um, let's start off with Darnell Mooney. Panic or patience? Patience. It's got to be patience, we had the we- right? We we had the weather game in the in week one, uh, the oh my god, seventeen dropbacks, eleven pass attempts in in week two. That when they're trailing for the most of the game, that was horrific play calling. But I we saw the talent. There's, you know, if you have Darnell Mooney on your roster, and I have a good amount of shares. Me too. You can't get anything for him. So so I, I think you just got to be patient. There, there's no reason to go out there and sell super low. Um, yeah, I'm going to be patient with Darnell Mooney. I agree with you. You can't sell him right now. But how can you not be fucking panicking? Because, yeah, I was ready to give him game one. Game one, monsoon game, crazy game. Game two. Was there less fucking pass attempts in game two? Like what? I didn't. I fell asleep at halftime. But like, that is correct. What 11, the 11 fuck attempts. happened in game two? Attempts. What's the excuse for that? Like, my man is a stud. I really like Darnell Mooney. I too have a lot of Darnell Mooney because he's like in that really kind of cheap eighth, seventh, eighth, ninth round area where you could get him in startups and, and pretty attainable trade through wise. trade wa- through, through trading. And so I have a good a bit. Of Darnell Mooney, but I'm fucking panicking with any Bears players. Well, cer- what the cer- fuck's going on over there? You certainly can't start freaking him. out, man. You certainly got to bench him right now. Oh yeah, that's not even a question and, until s- some things change. But he's on the bench. I mean, we could kind of just do the whole Bears roster outside of maybe David Montgomery. I mean, is 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 it? Do you think it's a Justin Fields problem that the coaching staff is like, yeah, we got to keep and keep this game under wraps the best we can? Because maybe we don't trust Fields or it's offensive line problem is the coaching. Pro- it's it's the Bears. They're the yeah, problem. I I think part of it goes back to the coaching, but then it's like why why aren't they allowing this man to throw the ball? But one thing I will say, if you look at it over the last few years, Green Bay is a their defensive strategy. It's a run funnel defense. If you look. Like like the the Bears were able to gash them constantly. Yeah. Uh, Montgomery looked really good. Mm. So from that perspective, I I think the offense overall they they looked at what the Packers were giving them. And they were just taking that. So that could kind of uh, justify the the lack of pass attempts. But once you start trailing by two scores, mm-hmm. how are you not opening right. up? Well, that's really when things are like. Listen, I'm all for saying. Hey, the run's working. Let's stick with the run, but like not mixing a little bit more pass in there. It just yeah, <laughs> like, like 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 you're down. Double it you're from down. nine to eighteen, or that's even that eighteen pass right. attempts would be a, a and very you, small did you amount. Say David Montgomery was running the ball well. Oh yeah, what, do you say that? Mm-hmm. My our man, our man. I was <laughs> to say my man, but our man David Montgomery. Well, we've yes, been, we've been. Dropping the smuggest man on Twitter's uh, <laughs> yeah, your hatred for David Montgomery <laughs> on here. And it looked like maybe week one I had to tip the cap to him, but week two, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I, I'm not selling Mooney. I'm not you, panic selling, you, but you, I'm fucking what do you panicking. Think over there, Matt? What do you think? I'm on the panic side of patience. I think that's fair. I mean, you, like you guys have just said, like you can't not be panicking about the entire Bears offense. But Schnozberries tastes like Schnozberries. Yeah, but like JB said, like it I mean we, we've seen the talent happen. Yeah. It's two games in. I'm not going to overreact after two games. Fields is going to get better. Mooney's going to get better. I, he mean, he's got four yards through two games. Yeah. There's nowhere to go but up. Yeah. And that's still more than Cole Komet, which is, <laughs> which, which is right. Like, look, I guess that's I could wrap this up with that. Like, look, I, I bought I was a, a pretty big proponent of Cole Komet being like one of the last tight ends that I wanted to really buy because I f- was just factoring in being the wide receiver too, basically for the bears, but nowhere on my bingo card where the bear is going to drop back 28 times in the first two fucking games. Now the first one I can give you and like, look, I, I, I'm not sure of Cole Komet's talent level, but I'm pretty sure of Darnell Mooney's talent. The Cole Komet one was like volume based, kind of came on a little bit at the end, end of last season. I'm not sure he's awesome, but like I think he could be just fine if pumped enough volume. Darnell Mooney, I'm pretty sure, is a pretty good wide receiver. So like that that, that gives me a, a, a panic. Got to get him out of the lineup, but have patience because this is going to, I think, work out just fine. Through the first two games here, Houston, and I, 
Chicago has Houston this week, I believe, right? Correct. Uh, they've given up the seventh most passing yards in the league. And I know it's only two weeks in, but you got to think they look to open it up a little bit here against Houston. And now if they don't, I'm, I'm with Matt. I go from patiently panicking to red alert. What the hell is going on here? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, let's go. Ezekiel Elliott, panic or patience? Five points through the first two games here. Uh, you lost your left tackle coming into the season. You got Dak Prescott out now. What What are we thinking uh, with uh, Zeke Elliott? Panic. I, th- I I was acquiring early in the offseason at what I believed to be a discount. I thought he was a strong veteran buy. Last year, he was tied for seventh in rushing attempts inside the five. All right. Ten touchdowns, obviously bolstered his production a little bit. This year through two, two weeks, zero carries inside the 20. He's not running routes the way we, we would hope. He has two targets per game so far to start the season. And Tony Pollard has looked a heck of a lot better. And I was I was really on the uh, Zeke isn't washed just yet. Yeah. But through two weeks, this is one. And then with the way that offense has looked, uh, the Dak Prescott injury – and then the offensive line woes and injuries that you just talked about, Casey. Uh, it, it's concerning to me that he's not entirely being phased out, but it's gravitating towards that way. Yeah, uh, I, I thought week one and the attempts that Zeke had, he didn't. He certainly didn't look washed. But we're just their offense is non-existent right now. Even with Dak in there, it wasn't moving. So, like at least last year, you were getting you know the attempts to score points which can prop help prop zeke up and then like you said if you can get a couple of those little check downs which he was usually good for because the amount of usage that they give him he's usually just out there de facto for a couple of check downs and he's fine with that i only need three or four catches for 10 to 30 yards from zeke to you know really feel okay about it but now that you got cooper rush in there the offensive lines hurt like you said i i was saying yeah buy him i'll draft him and redraft this year because the the value I thought was going to be good because I thought you would get pretty good usage here and then if you were a person who has him on a team already you know you were hoping that you would get okay usage so that hey midway through the season I could sell Zeke on the last two raw for somebody trying to make a push so I think on all fronts right now you're a little panicked so I would I would uh, agree um, with the panic there, any what do you? I mean, I was panicking on Zeke before the season even started. Yeah. So I mean, this just further exacerbates that panic thought for me. So, I mean, you got to be panicking. It's like I'm just sick of Zeke. I've been trying to be on the Zeke train. I was off early in my career, and then I'm like, nah, I need to get on. And I've been on for like a few years now, and it just seems to be always fucking something. And it's not necessarily his fucking fault, but it's well, always fucking something. I think right now, it's, I don't think it's Zeke's fault it's right now. It's definitely not his fault. Well, but no, all you, have, all, all you have to do in defense against the Cowboys, double CD, put seven men in the box, and then play man against whoever, and that's you, that's the easiest way to play defense against Cowboys right now. There's no secondary There's no secondary receiving threat for the Cowboys until Gallup comes back and whatever happens with Schultz. But, I mean... It's not Zeke's fault, but, man, I need some fucking production. I'm panicking. I feel yeah. like we're in the scene from Goodwill Hunting. It's not, it's your, not your fault. fault. <laughs> right. It's not your fault. Let me ask you guys, would you trade Zeke in... Tight end premium two PPR straight up for Gerald Everett. No, I'm, I'm I'll hold out hope and hope that we get a little bit more traction. You're saying you're getting two points per reception for tight ends, so making it a little bit more intriguing. I like what I've seen from Gerald Everett to start the season. You lost except Keenan. for his number. Like, can we change his number? <laughs> I hate so many of the numbers. I'm like, I, I, in like that I, might be the worst one. So, though. That might be the worst one, though. I actually don't. Yeah, hate it. I, hate I don't. So many I think it's I cool, hate. but like a man that big should not be number seven. I like the way he looked. He got no Keenan here in that in that last game. Nah, nah I'm, I'm gonna roll. I gotta I gotta hang on for a couple more weeks to see if I can up the ante a little bit, but. Uh, I offered Zeke straight up for Christian Kirk earlier today, and it was a quick decline. Yeah. That's a, that's you know, right, I, I, right now. That's not going to go well. Nope. No. No. Yeah. Now before the season, that was that, easy. That would have been a different that story. Been easy. Either that would have been a quick accept. I think. But yeah, there, I, there are a constituent of Zeke haters that were have been out there for two or three years, but I think for the most part, I think you're probably right. I just All don't right. know what you could get, but yeah. I'm certainly panicking. Yeah. 
Um, let's go to Kyle Pitts. Everybody's everybody's in a tizzy. Um, can we can we talk anybody off the ledge here? Or is everybody uh, hands on the cheeks? You know, just I'm freaking out, man. <laughs> you are we, freaking out, what do man. We, what do we think about Kyle Pitts here? There might be an issue from a short term. Uh, production standpoint, but there aren't many assets out there that have the insulated value that a Kyle Pitts does. Like he, if he doesn't perform this year, there's going to be excuses made for him, and that's just going to l- let him maintain his value. And I've kind of equated him to the the tight end version of DK Metcalf this year. You know, you, his value is just going to be what it is, and then assuming next year both of these players get a quarterback upgrade you're going to see the the spike in value again and not necessarily a spike in value for Kyle Pitts because outside of Mark Andrews there's nobody that's going to bump him down beyond two yeah like even even from production standpoint Travis Kelsey you know due to his age he right. it's not even a, a Waller question. due to the age probably the it, same uh, you could even say Kittle and that like there's just nobody that is going to take that worst case scenario number two spot so we talk about insulated value and assets that's the definition of Kyle Pitts there so from a short-term production standpoint panicking but not a dynasty asset that I'm panicking saying i gotta get him off my roster yeah. like i'm okay I, I i moved one share because I, I was able to split him up into multiple pieces and i like the return but i have a few shares that oh, i'm okay letting him sit there yeah. i mean i don't think you can afford to be panicking with pits especially where you drafted him a tight end premium leagues i mean he was going as a top five to eight pick in tight end premium startups i mean if you're panicking already then you're not playing dynasty right that's right. just that's just like poor it. roster management there and just short sightedness. I mean, if you want to sell, if you want to sell pits and redraft, by all means do that. But again, what there's not a lot of trades going on in redraft, but if you're panicking on pits and dynasty, then let's play in a league together. Um, I think that's that's <laughs> pretty pretty well said there. We can keep it moving unless you have anything. I might try and bench him, but then I'm going to regret that probably the week I do it. So I just, I just uh, don't know how you can, I don't know how, I don't know how many times Arthur Smith said, we're not trying to play fantasy football, we're trying not to win games. Okay, but you're giving more targets to Ola Maidy Zacchaeus than you are to Kyle Pitts? What, and Kaderil Hodge. Yeah, Kaderil Hodge, Hodge? Come on, man. Well, they're also running uh, Avery Williamson out yeah. there a whole bunch instead of like in the two minute offense last week, I think yeah. he had the most of the two minute offense over CPAT. It's like to make no, I don't know what the fuck Arthur Smith's doing, but not having a chin. The, that's what he's doing. <laughs> the one, the one thing that does give me hope with Kyle Pitts from a shorter term perspective is this isn't like, and we just talked about Chicago. It's not like a Chicago situation where it's, especially from a tight end perspective, it's a limited upside situation for Cole Komet because nobody's getting the targets. Right. There just aren't targets to go around. But in Atlanta, like Drake London, he's producing. We t- uh, Olamide, Zacchaeus, and Kaderil Hodge, not great numbers, but they're putting up something. So there is a, there is a pie to go around. In Chicago, you're not even getting a, a little cupcake. Right. And I don't even mean like a, a full-size cupcake, like those little the ones. little ones. Uh, the yeah, they come like the little like twelve in the car. The little yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, so at least for Kyle Pitts, there is that opportunity with with the targets to go around. Just you know, I I saw some people maybe talk about separation being a, a little bit of an issue, but I mean, yeah, there's no, there can't be any dynasty panic. Matt Matt nailed it. The only the, the only th- I'm giving him a pass on week two because I think I didn't look at the coverage, but I think he probably saw a good bit of Jalen Ramsey week two because Ramsey's been playing that star position or whatever the hell they're calling it in LA where he's been playing a lot of s- slot but I'm sure that that worked out who for whoever was going against him week one but yeah which that was Diggs so yeah they uh, I, I saw something and I think it was around 50% of the time Kyle Pitts so far is being matched up against a cornerback where you have these other tight ends. But but if you're lining up outside, if you're lining up in the slot, obviously it's not always going to be a linebacker, but yeah. it certainly isn't helping Kyle Pitts in that regard. You also need to be able, like the whole point of drafting Kyle Pitts where you drafted him in the NFL draft is to 
work him into the mismatch. Like that's the whole, that's the, your scheme should be based around mismatches for Kyle Pitts because you spent the fourth overall fucking pick in the NFL draft on him. So I was incorrect. So figure the, it out. Arthur. I was incorrect. By the way, Kyle Pitts saw zero snaps against, um, what an idiot. Where'd you pull I, that up at? PFF. All right, let's. Well, keep maybe it. if he was matched up against, yeah. uh, who'd you say? Yeah, Ramsey. Jalen Ramsey, Ramsey could have yeah. he would have been okay. Target. Yeah. Perfect Jordan pass Jordan, rating when targeted him. Jordan week Fuller, one. my boy, Nick Scott, and Troy Hill, who's, who he saw coverage against. PFF's yeah. got all kinds of nice shit. It's just fucking hidden all over the goddamn place. It's not that hard. You just go to receiving <laughs> versus coverage. Yeah. A lot of, you got to click a lot of Let me get it all boxes. in one fucking spot, PFF. Just Don't make me do any math either. Let's go to Elijah Moore here. Um, 91% and 84, 89.4% snap share, 96% route percent route participation, only a 12% target share. Um, and then you got Wilson this year with, or this week, um, 46% snap share, then to a 63% snap share in week two, uh, 22% target share for Wilson. What's a good, what's a good threshold for target share, JB? So, I, I mean, it, that's a loaded question. Somewhere between a twelve of, and twenty-two. <laughs> I higher than twelve, but but a lot of it comes down to like uh, a twenty percent target share for Curtis Samuel because the A dot is going to be far different than a twenty percent target share for somebody who's going to have a lot more air yards. So, uh, yeah, what did we say? Elijah Moore was at twelve. Twelve. Uh, that's not going to cut it. Yeah, that's especially big. because he's probably going to be playing more of that. Curtis Samuel Samuel role you would think, but I well, they got CD in the slot a lot. I'll pull up those P. I'll pull up those numbers for. I think, so I think, week week one Elijah Moore was at eight point one yeah. for his average depth of target. He stayed uh, out of for, the slot I think a good bit too, out of the slot. Thirty two percent for the uh, slot rate in week one, but down to twenty two percent week two, and it was an uptick to fourteen yards for his average depth of target. But still, uh, point thirteen uh, percent, eleven percent week over week for his target share per route run, and that's just not enough. But I will say, and this is kind of the excuse you see floating around. Well, let's see what happens when Zach Wilson comes back. So because we are going to have that change there very well could be uh, more of an uptick for Elijah Moore. But at least he's on the field running the routes. He's right. getting his cardio in. Yeah, I just, I just feel like, you know, on some of the, you know, all, most of the guys that we've talked about, like we know Elijah Moore is good. He didn't all of a sudden get bad at football. He At a stretch last year, he was like the wide receiver six, seven mm -hmm. uh, for, for a long stretch of, of time. I guess more of the question is how, how worried are you as Wilson coming into now being – the de facto one there where it was like the, the reason I maybe bumped Wilson down a little bit was because I felt so comfortable with the Jets pumping usage towards Elijah Moore. Um, so is, 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 is this something concerning? Should we, are we out on Elijah Moore or I don't know if you were ever in or what, what do you, what are your thoughts here? Patience or panic? The market. So one thing that we do on dynasty theory and I have my tears that we share through the Patreon but every Saturday morning, Mitch and I, we do a, a show called The Pivot Point, and essentially it's just taking KTC, DTC, DLF, ADP, and, and putting all that together and getting an average uh, to give us a high-level number on where these guys are going in relation to their position, in relation cross-positionally. And for Elijah Moore, he's coming in through those uh, different sources at wide receiver 23 and I have him in the 28 to 38 tier honestly so I was a little bit lower on him to start with um, but, you know I, I thought there was just a little bit too much hype but he is somebody if I can find the right trade partner I would be looking to pivot off of Okay, I, I I'm gonna disagree there. I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna hold on Elijah Moore. I'm gonna buy, baby. Uh, like I like what I saw. I like the player. I like the way he fits in this system that that uh, Lafleur is gonna run. I think he's a perfect fit. Uh, but Wilson Wilson pretty strong there. So Matt, what do you think? I know you were. I, I don't I don't want to interrupt, but there was uh, earlier today I sent out an offer. Somebody said they were interested in Elijah Moore actually, and I think they were just testing the water to see how low I would sell. But I said my price was the twenty three first. You know, if we're just going to use a, a sure. pick it's, it's, value it's a, here, it's a good baseline to use the pick value. 
And they came and said, I'll, I'll, I can offer you a second. And that conversation ended very quickly. Yeah. So am I, am I lower than consensus? Sure. But that doesn't mean I'm giving the player away. Would you so, trade Elijah Moore for Terry McLaurin? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I would. Pretty easily. I, I would not. No? I'm sticking with my guy. You, but you had Terry up higher. I did, but that that was before that was before I saw how all three of these like I thought Terry would come in and just dominate this offense, and now I'm a little worried that it's just going to be spread out between the three for years to come. I'll, I'll take Terry, but Terry, Terry. What do you think, Matt? Oh, uh, he's he's so pa- panicking or or patience on. I mean, I was never really patient with him i mean i before we even before the season before the season started on our wide receiver ranking show i had yeah you had wilson, wilson. ranked ahead of you did more there so jay wayne uh, i like the talent you know and i'm so, probably i'm probably patient in the sense that i'm gonna try and wait for wait for uh wilson to come back and hopefully have a game a bigger game so that i can try and get that that 23 first for him but i'm not gonna i'm not, I'm not gonna sell at a value below market just because I'm not panicking because I didn't plan for him to come out and just murk. I knew that he might could because him and Zach Wilson had a rapport. I didn't know we'd be getting elite Fla- elite Flacco throwing it to Garrett and <laughs> Corey Davis, you know. But I didn't necessarily feel great about the immediate production I was about to get from Elijah Moore. It was more about taking the talent and it being dynasty. So the fact that it hasn't worked out amazingly so far you know with the jets it's like i'm cutting him some slack i'm being patient all right i think this is the fav my favorite guest spot i've done with you guys because this is the first time i've had the pleasure of interacting with matt and he and i see eye to eye here so <laughs> I, I i mean you're talking about your tripod i i gotta if we're doing a buy sell and hold i gotta buy matt over there all right <laughs> strong buy <laughs> 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 All right, uh, let's go. Let's go. Josh Jacobs, panic or patience? Panic. panic. And why? W- panic. One thing that I was hoping to see with Brandon Bolden not being active this last week, I was hoping that we were going to have more of an impact in his usage in the passing game, and we just didn't see that. Six percent target share per route run. And he's not getting the high value touches. And and I talked about it with Zeke when we talked about Damian Pierce a couple weeks ago. That was something I mentioned. And uh, that's something that is a concern. And the last year of his contract. Now, he is young enough to be able to bounce back somewhere else. And that might be uh, uh, beneficial for him. But right now, as it stands, as a Las Vegas Raider, I think Josh Jacobs is going to be in for a rough season. So I'm I, I'm panicking, but it goes hand in hand with what we talked about with Ezekiel Elliott and so many others. Like people don't want to pay for running back right now. They don't. And I don't blame them because I'm trying to sell all these running backs because you can you can patchwork together uh, a Jeff Wilson, Jamal Williams and get similar production to what Josh Jacobs might be putting out on a weekly basis. Yeah, I mean, you're not. I mean, why would I buy Zeke or Jacobs when I can hopefully hold that out for maybe grabbing next year if I can get a Bijan, if I can get a Jameer Gibbs, if I can get someone like that who's 21, 22 versus spending a guy. I mean, what's Jacobs going to be? 25 next year? Yeah, he's only 24. Like, it's yeah, he's super young still. He's super I feel young, like he's been in the league I mean, for ages. I mean, like, um, he came out super young. I, I don't think you're ever really getting like. You were never gonna get a twenty three first for Josh Jacobs. Like if you're trying to sell Josh Jacobs and you and you definitely would never get a twenty three first for selling Zeke. That being said, I do think people are trying to buy running backs. Like it's hard to find a running back. And yeah, Jeff Wilson, sure, it. for a week. Or uh, who else did you say? Um Jamal, Jamal Williams. Williams. I mean like, Jamal Williams. That's all like you can't bank on that shit though. Like and, and like like that that, that I feel like I'm going to have a little patience with Josh Jacobs because he has looked pretty good. He's just not getting the receiving work, which I'm going to blame coaching on that. And and maybe it doesn't work out, but, like, he wasn't the most expensive running back. Like, he was pretty cheap as far as workhorses go, and he has looked pretty good from an eye test standpoint. And But he's Raiders- not getting those high-value touches at all. The Raiders haven't had a whole lot of high value. T- Sorry, I had to excuse myself. I had to cool off after you said you were buying Matt. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> 
I, so which one is he cut? Which one is he murdering and fucking? Because he's marrying Matt. You know, I don't know who's getting fucked and cut. cut but uh, have we? Ha- that, that's on the FF Dynasty After Dark. I heard. That's yeah. us. We ha- we haven't seen the Raiders that we thought we would see on offense. I think first of all, that offensive line is absolute trash right now. Um, but I I think you got to panic as far as the season goes. I think law, like he's he'll be out of there next year. I think there is good talent with Josh Jacobs, and we've seen him be featured and be you know a top twenty four running back fairly consistently, and really a top twelve running back pretty consistently throughout his years of being in the league so far. Um, it's just, you know, you got a new a new guy who's who's come from a, a you know, a platoon system, who's always employed a platoon system. Um, and, you know, so I, I think it's panic week to week right now for Josh Jacobs, but I think it's a little bit of long term. Like it'd be a buy. That'd be a buy for me. I'd buy low on Josh Jacobs if we were doing what's, trade what, targets. What's low? Like what wide receiver would you feel comfortable moving for Josh Jacobs right now? Oh, uh, I don't know. I got to see a list here. Um, hmm. Ayuk, would you move Ayuk for Jacobs? I'd probably keep Ayuk. I I'm would buy low on Ayuk too. Yeah, I would. I would I, keep Ayuk too, and I'm <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I'm. I've been a big Ayuk guy since he was at Arizona State. So, Mike Williams, would you move him? No, no, I'll keep Mike. I I wouldn't either. So so maybe we're not we're not necessarily disagreeing too much here. Um, Michael Thomas, yes. I'd be okay Brandon with Cooks. selling. I mean, de- depending on which way, which way I was going. Um, Let me get Josh Jacobs for Michael Thomas. I yeah, think. And, and Cooks. I think this year that'll be regrettable, um, as far as you know, weak points per game. Um, but I think securing a, he's still only twenty four, so you still you should get three more years, and he hasn't gotten run into the ground necessarily week in week out. So I could I could be okay with that. Um, He's probably a guy that, you know, maybe you don't trade for right now. Maybe you, you wait until you're a little further down the line um, and, and, and try to acquire. But, um, no, I, th- I think that's a – he's an interesting one for sure. What do you think, Matt? Yeah, I, I, I'm staying patient on Jacobs, but I think if I'm getting, a, if I'm getting another person who's trying to – I would be entertaining offers, but I don't think I would be super motivated to sell. But I guess you could say that about any any player. But <laughs> um, I I just don't know that I'm getting I'm getting the value right now for Jacobs to be able to sell him for what I think he's worth. So I'm gonna yeah. stay patient for that reason. When, when I think that when I think that there there could be brighter days ahead. But then at the but then at the same token, I'm like, who's gonna really be signing a 25 year old Jacobs when I can go pick up a third or fourth round running back who's 21. With less tread on the t- with less tread of the tires potentially, so I don't. I, I if I could figure out how to sell, turn Corey Davis or um, not Corey, Corey Davis. Davis. Yeah, uh, I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> the Curtis Samuel into into Josh Jacobs with a little something extra. I would do something like that. I would, that that's kind of maybe where I'd be <laughs> shopping. If you, Curtis Samuel in a third. late second value, early say, third. I, I'd try to. I'd go third first and see if what where where that gets us, you know, and see if what here's else we got to add. So here's a few trades. Clay pull in a 23 third for Jacobs. I would take Jacobs there. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Uh, let me see. Well, Jacobs for Ju- Jacobs for Juju. I'm also fine with that. Yeah. I think I might want Juju there. I would take Juju there too. I'll take, I'll take Recency Jacobs. bias. For There's what? No but Juju, Juju had a terrible Juju game. Too. Nothing. Have you, did you see our lineup in the Patreon League last week? He did nothing. All right, let's keep it moving here. In the yeah, we have both of them, and Juju's done nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that That's what I'm talking about. Reasons he buys with yeah. Juju. At least Which I know is, what Jacobs is doing. Not the Clown League, by the way. Let's. let's <laughs> yeah, that, I don't know. We're none of us are in this Clown League, bro. <laughs> Some guy uh, on YouTube keeps asking if we're in this league. We're not. Real quick, this uh, 22 usage report that you got, JB. I don't know. If you're doing some, are you doing that manually? So, you got a program to an put that in because uh, this is so it's available in this Patreon. Worth the money here because it's a fantastic report. You got uh, everything that you want on this little little report. Uh, you don't have to give it away. I, I wanted to no, plug initially, it anyway. 
I appreciate that. Initially, I was going line by line. So all it is is gathering data from right. several different sources and just making it a, like but I don't putting it all together. It. This is fantastic. Like I don't promote it or use it as oh, a uh, point for people to join the Patreon, but it's something I, I readily share with, with you folks. Um, but yeah, I was going line by line at first, and I was like, "Shit, this is taking me like, <laughs> yeah, I, it takes me like the whole week." I'm like, "Oh god." Yeah. Uh, but I I switched that up a little bit, and I've been able to uh, uh, uh speed it up super a little bit. Nerd them and figure, CSV that bitch out with some code or something. Anyway, I, uh, I'm a, I'm a freak in the sheets. What can I say? Just another sheets, reason but, to join the the uh, Dynasty Theory Patreon. Just right, giving well, you another plug. Let's do two more here and then we'll we'll get out of here. Uh, let's do James Cook. Uh, panic or patience? Oh, me first. Me first. You go first. I I'm patiently not giving a shit about him. <laughs> I don't care. Like I don't care. Like I really don't care about James Cook. He's on zero percent of my teams. I don't see the upside, especially where he was going in rookie drafts. What value is he giving to your team? The pass catching is. But he's the not upside. catching passes. JB, so why do I care? You still marrying this guy, or what do we what do we think here? <laughs> I, I, I don't necessarily disagree. I, I, I like. I'm it. gonna be. I'm, I I'm like gonna be feisty Matt. That was the first feisty Matt I think we've gotten since he's been on the show. <laughs> I'll be patient, but I do not care true. a little bit more than Matt and. You know, if you expected James Cook to come out here and destroy year one, you were sorely you know, you were mistaken. Um, but I am interested in twenty three and beyond. But is that offense going to look different with the way they operate with Josh Allen at the helm? The only chance Probably they had not. was this was switched from Dayball to Dorsey, and it hasn't looked any different. It's the exact same offense. It, yeah. So with even with if Devil Dev, Devil Devin Singletary is gone, Zach Moss. He's gone. Really, what opportunities is James Cook going to have? I, could he He'd be have to a, get every single one of them to be the most relevant? Could he be a ten to twelve PPR back? Sure, you know, uh, ten to twelve PPR points per game, not not ranked ten to twelve. Let right, me right. let me clarify. Uh, but y- y- it, are you happy with that necessarily? If you invested a late first in him, hell no. Over over Jahan Dotson, yeah. No, I mean, I mean, James Cook's his upside is. J, uh, J.D. McKissick. In I, my I, mind. I think he's maybe a little more pl- explosive than the, that. The and upside then they, is, is, is maybe 10 carries a game plus J.D. Well, McKissick, he had 11, which led the team in rushing that, that was carries. All late. That was, that was all, late yeah, while they yeah. were up. Yeah. It, the thing with James Cook always with me was, I think you guys pretty much all alluded to it, was like if, if the Bills were going to come out and build – him into the offense then maybe he would be worth that first but they've are like maybe they were going to when he came out week one and fucked up and now they're like hey buddy let's pump the brakes but like we haven't quite seen it yet they were up big you know i just it, i i need to, that that was the whole reason why i was not buying the first because it was like it would take them to really design you know a, a nice package of plays around him 20 plays a game to make him worth what you were getting and when is that going to happen how what have the bills shown us to be that way, maybe as you know, they didn't run Josh Allen a ton in this last game, uh, but yeah, no, I I agree. I'm I didn't really buy any James Cook in rookie drafts. I bought him in some startups because he ended up kind of ended up being a little cheap that near the end there. So I did get him just because I was going a little bit more zero RB and he could fit that mold, uh, you know, a little bit. Uh, but no, I I. I um, I, I agree with both of you guys. It was, it was, it's basically, I'm not panicking because I don't really fuck with them. So. I mean, even this, pa- if he- even this past week with, with, with no Gabe Davis, we had players like Jake Kumaro, Reggie Gilliam, Jameson Crowder, and Isaiah McKenzie all had more targets than Cook did. And Gabe Davis wasn't playing. So, I mean, it, I understand they were playing from, they were playing, it was, it was a super lead. positive game, game script the entire time, but he's still not getting work. Singletary had more targets than him. Khalil Shakir had more targets than him. I mean, he's only if had he's one not target get, through two games, so. If he's not going to get targets and he's not going to get those inside the 10 carries, I'd be a hypocrite not to say that's critical, you know, not as critical for him when I mentioned it for three different running backs on tonight's show already. It, it's super important to me. I want targets and I want red zone usage. And I don't know if we're ever going to get that from James Cook to ever have more of a ceiling than, like I said, maybe that 10 to 12 points. Well, yeah, you're pretty raw. 
you know, and they they they're a well oiled machine over there. They don't need him. Yeah, I so mean, they're working him in slow. I mean, you couldn't have expected him to come out and blow it off the windows. You're dumb if you took him in the first round of your rookie draft. We told you that. Uh, so you only have yourself to blame. The, none of us are panicking because we didn't fuck with him. We don't have him because we didn't reach for him. And so now we're just like, this is what you're stuck with. But that being said, like, he's got to figure out how to pass protect. He's raw. He has raw ability. The targets could come. Like, you can't bail now if you have him, and it's going to take a minute. He's, but if he could work himself into that offense... We're two games in. He is explosive. He has Jinkos, really good genes, okay? Like, he's got the, the Dolce & Gabbana, you know? Uh, wristbands 300. Jeans are two, but they won 300. Like, <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? It's good going rap lyrics It's a little, little Wayne, okay? <laughs> Showing your uh, lack of hipness over there. <laughs> what? Look, he he has good genes. Like he's explosive. Like he's a capable guy. Maybe just let it breathe for a second. You know, if no. you if you took him in the first round, you should be panicking. If you didn't, then just be a little patient. Because you- so I could tell my kid all the time if you if you just listen, you get to do whatever you want. You don't make mistakes. If you <laughs> yeah. you know if you don't listen, there's consequences. Right. You didn't listen. No right. no, no iPad time. Then. That's fucking right. Next yeah, J- James Cook. James, James Cook has got to get his iPad time back. Yeah, he's not getting the iPad unless it's to watch film and learn how to pass protect. But he's a 23 and beyond play uh, in a league where I'm contending and looking for some wide receiver help. I offered him straight up for Allen Robinson and it was declined. As yeah. it should have been. Right, right. I, I was looking to acquire Robinson. <laughs> no, yeah. So I, I always laugh and I, I do this too. I'll pop in our Discord. I'm like, I can't believe this was rejected. And then I'm like, well, I was trying to make the trade, so why am I surprised? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's let's do one more. We'll get out of here. We'll go DK Metcalf. Um, panic or patience? JB, what you got? Patient. Patience. Uh, I'm actively looking to acquire as the season progresses. I'd be shocked if he really has any pop in production this year whether it's just because of how the offense is run, if it's a Geno Smith thing, but you have to believe they fix, or at least try to fix that quarterback situation in 2023. So I'm looking to find him on teams that are contending. Who are pieces that I could move that, you know, it's it's not going to cripple me moving forward. So DK Metcalf, somebody I'm happily looking to acquire. Have I had any luck? No, because unless you're living under a rock, a lot of people share that same thought with him, but it's not going to stop me from trying. Yeah. Patience, Iago. Yeah, patience. patience. Yeah. So easily, easy patience. You give that 23 first, right? You got to. Let's go up to the 23 first, Nazi. I'm got there. It's JB. <laughs> Don't call him Nazi. <laughs> um, <laughs> if, <laughs> if I believe it's a very late 23 first, but, it, but also... You don't have to make that move today because I don't think, you know, over the next three, four weeks, his value is really going to change all that much compared to today. If anything, it might drop a little bit. But, uh, you know, that's tough because if I'm looking to acquire him off of a contender that needs points, the 2023 first doesn't really make sense in that situation right. from a how is this helping you perspective. But, as the, if we're six, seven weeks in, and I see, okay, my team, it, it's been a really solid start. I'm six and one, seven and oh. Yeah, I'd be more than happy to look to move that 23 first for a player like DK Metcalf. Would you, if, all right, so this you just is, don't know who you're going to get in this, this is, next class. It's going to be better or is equal to DK Metcalf talent wise. You know what I mean? Maybe you find some banging situation, or maybe you can fall into a, uh, a running back, but still, like, DK's a freak. Kind of what you laid out there is a move that we like to make a lot in any team that is not looking like they're going to make the playoffs or, or rebuilding or whatever is go to we'll, – we've actually taken it so far to say as like a player as on that winning team's IR, like a J.K. Dobbins last year, you go after that guy and and because the, he's not doing anything for that team, you know, maybe you try to make a trade with him and, and get some first and some, some somebody who's doing something. But for like a DK Metcalf, like you said, maybe somebody who isn't necessarily producing, would you, you know, is that instead of doing the first, is that like, you know, Keenan Allen and Jahan Dotson? Is that too much? 
Yeah, that might be a little too much for me. But but something along those lines. Where, I was going to just say Keenan Allen, but that obviously didn't seem like it feels like you need a, an older and a slightly younger asset to push you over. Keenan was to get shredding right now. DK then. back. Well, we're going to presume that Keenan will be shredding by week eight when he's back in that lineup. Because he was. A, what about a, a Keenan Allen and Gabriel Davis? If it, you know a younger asset that has some seems hype like people. a lot, right? For what to get for up? DK for DK? I could entertain that. I think depending on the roster construction yeah. and where I am with my team, what yeah. Are you guys texting each other under here's the table a, here? Here's a, here's, a, <laughs> here's a savvy move. Here's a savvy move. If you have DK and you're trying to get rid of him, I want you to wait till week nine, week 10. You find the guy who's in seventh place, find the guy who's in eighth place, who's got a half decent team, and you try and move DK for his 23 first. Because worst case scenario, it's going to be maybe the 106, 107. But he puts DK in his lineup, and DK still not doing anything. Then you could be sitting in a top four, top five pick in a super flex league, and that's cash money. Man, don't move S- DK for a 23 first. Don't do it. <laughs> you, I in mean, super I'm not flex? Say, I'm in not super say. flex? Any, any, nope. re, any draft. Can I, can I be honest here? And hopefully you guys don't boot me. Or at least, Jay, hopefully you don't boot me. There's one specific league that I'm kind of having fun with it, right? I have 523 first. Uh, the team wasn't winning. So I was like, Let, let's just let completely yeah. blow it up. And during the off season, I targeted specific teams, but I, I moved DK straight up for 123 first. That I, I believed, and I, got, I actually have to go back and look to see how that team's doing to start the season. But it was a situation that Matt discussed just months earlier than he had proposed. Yeah. I actually got to pull it up right now. I will say in going the other way with DK of saying, maybe you can wait. I don't remember what the stats were, but we had them at one point in the limited amount that Gino played last year. There was a pretty good rapport. And like, I think he was averaging 19 19 points points per game with Gino Smith last year. Small sample size. It was a small sample. Only four games. And um, so through the first, uh, you know, couple games this year, it wasn't nearly that good, but I will say, week one you came off this crazy emotional roller coaster against a former team, which this next game was a huge letdown spot that you had to see coming for Seattle, um, and Gino not playing well. Whereas Gino played pretty well the first game. Did it amount to a ton of DK points? Not necessarily, but it didn't look like it was going to be awful for DK. And then they come and play the Niners. A rival who 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 have beaten the Niners up a good bit with Russell. They wanted to get them here, and they just came off a big game playing Russell. So I feel like there could be a little potential upswing coming back for DK Metcalf and Geno Smith, who had a decent rapport uh, last year. Also, DK saw a good bit of PS2 in that first game. He's up and coming. Right, Sertan. Yeah. Could be a... a Drastic quarterback change for Seattle next year. I just don't know. It has to be. I just don't know who you're expecting to get better than DK Metcalf. You know what I mean? In a rookie draft. Like, it's a crapshoot. It's a 50-50 shot regardless. And you know DK's good. You know he can't be guarded. You know? That's why I said super flex because then I'm looking at a top. I'm looking at a great quarterback or I'm looking at a top end. But even the quarterbacks, they're a 50-50 shot, a first-round quarterback, right? I mean, like. Is, is those percentages off, JB? Like no, you. I mean that. That's. I, I think you're fairly close there. But again, that that's why you know, both Matt and I we're, we're talking about targeting <laughs> Chatting specific under the big table. Yeah, hey Matt. <laughs> but but we're we're talking about targeting specific yeah teams yeah, yeah. and and their first and that's why I'm okay. You know, saying I, I would be okay moving a late first to acquire DK Metcalf yeah. under the right circumstances. So. I'm not disagreeing with you, Jay, but I'm certainly not disagreeing with my man, Matt. <laughs> well, you got to disagree with somebody. You guys are in cahoots. <laughs> Sounds like it's me. It's All fine. Right. It's okay. That's let's, it's, let's put a uh, bow on this okay. segment here. We got our guy, John Bauer, at the Bauer Club. You can check out Dynasty Theory every Tuesday at 9. Um, you can go to reveriebruco.com, buy a, a T-shirt, support the team. You can go to our Discord. You can go to his Discord. You get the great sheet that he's got. And amongst other things, you guys are really doing a good job on Discord. Um, Patreon. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below, all those things. We're still doing the free shirt giveaway. Um, five star reviews. Send us a uh, send us that in any social media platform or email, and we'll get you entered in a free raffle. Giving one of those away every couple of weeks. So be sure to do that. Um, we're gonna do one more segment 
not sure if John wants to stick around or not, uh, but we'll uh, you guys will find out in just a minute. So see you in a second. <laughs> 